So right now I'm going to explain how to do a resource loading question. We're going to go through uh, building the CPM diagram, uh, turning that into a bar chart, and then finally resource leveling. Uh, so to start off, you'll be given a table that looks like this, gives you activity, what is preceded immediately by um, the duration and the resources that it requires. So I went ahead and made this CPM diagram right here. Uh, just to save some time beforehand. You can see that A is the first activity because it's not preceded by anything, and then B, C, and D are all preceded immediately by A, so that's why an arrow goes directly from A to all three of those. Um, and then E is preceded immediately by B and C, right there, and so that's why both of those arrows go to E. And F is only preceded immediately by D, so that's why only one arrow goes there and so on and so forth for the rest of the CPM diagram. Uh, to start off, I'll do the forwards pass right now. So the earliest start we can get is obviously on day zero. Um, and the duration of A is three days, so the earliest you can finish is three days. So since that's the early finish, that will be the early start of B, C, and D doing the forward pass. Uh, 3 plus 2 is 5, so B will have an early finish date on the 5th day. Uh, C is 3 plus 1, 4, and same for D, 4. Now the early finish for D goes directly to the early start for F, uh, since it's not preceded, by immediate, or preceded immediately by anything besides D. E, on the other hand, um, the earliest it can start is on the fifth day because both B and C have to finish for E to start, and B finishes on the fifth day, which is later than C. So the earliest you can start E is on the fifth day. And continuing the forward pass, uh, 5 plus 3 is 8, so the early finish for E is on the eighth day and on the sixth day for F. And now... G is preceded immediately by only E, so that early finish becomes that G's early start, which means that the early finish for G is on the ninth day. Um, H is preceded immediately by E and F, and so both of those have to finish for H to be able to start, which means that uh, the earliest second start is on the eighth day. And so continuing the forward pass, early finish date is on the tenth, tenth day. And then I is preceded immediately by G and H, which means that 10 is the early start date for I. And then 12 is the early finish date for the project. And then we'll do the backwards pass right now. And if you want to keep on track, the earliest you can, or the latest you can start is on the 10th day. Uh, and that makes sense because I will be on the critical path since it's the last activity of the project. So the latest either G or H can finish is on the 10th day. And doing the backwards pass, 10 minus 2 is 8, and 10 minus 1 is 9. So this also shows that H is going to be on the critical path. So continuing the backwards pass, uh, the Latest that F can finish is on the 8th day, which means that the latest it can start is on the 6th day. And the latest that E can finish without delaying the project is on the 8th day, which means that the, earliest, or the latest it can start is on the 5th day. And continuing this, the late start of E is the fifth day, so that means that the late finish of B and C is on the fifth day. And down at D, the late start of F is going to be the late finish of D, so that's the sixth day. And continuing the backwards pass, 6 minus 1 is 5, 5 minus 1 is 4, and 5 minus 2 is 3. So that shows that out of B, C, and D, only B will be on the critical path. 
and continuing. The latest that A can finish without delaying the project is on the third day, which means that the latest it can start is on the last or the zero day, which makes sense because it's on the critical path. So I'll go ahead and show you what the critical path is. It's going to be this right here. I'll just change the color of the arrows right now to make it more obvious. You can see right there, that's the critical path of our project. So we're going to make a bar chart out of this now. So um, activity A goes for three days. So the first, second, and third day. And B starts on after the third day, and it goes for two days, so from the fourth to the fifth. And C can start on the fourth, and it's a one-day duration, which means it can end there. D is the same thing. E can start on the, or after the fifth day, which, so we'll do bar chart on the sixth day to the eighth day, because it's a three day activity. Uh, so C actually can go to the fifth day. You're going to have some float there. Sorry about that. And D can go to the sixth day. And F goes from the earliest start will be the fifth day and can go all the way to the eighth day. G can start on the ninth day and it's a one day duration, but it can go to the 10th day because you'll have float there. H starts after the eighth day, and it's a two-day activity, so it goes to the tenth. And finally, I will be the last two days. And I'll go ahead and show you what you have for float here, too. So A, you will not have any float. On B, you also will not have any float. On C, you'll have one day of float. On D, you'll have two days of float. On E, you'll have zero days of float. On F, you'll have two days of float. On G, you will have one day of float. On H, you'll have zero days of float. And of course on I, you will have zero days of float. And if you didn't see how I got that, um, take for example, C, early start is on the th third day and the late start is on the fourth day. So you have a one day difference there, which means that you'll have one day of float up here on your bar chart. And then I'll go ahead and add in the resources on all the days that you require to have resources, which is all the gray areas right here on my bar chart. Oops. I just screwed up right there, so you only three resources for a B, two resources here, one resource, four for activity E, 
one resource for activity F, two for G, three for H, and two for I. And you can see right here, there's a little line that just says demand. And all that is, is it tells you on any given day, what is the total required amount of resources in the bar chart. And I've gone ahead and made a graph here, which shows you uh, the dozers, which is the uh, resource that you'll need, how many dozers you'll need per day of your, uh, of your project. And so we'll use the float to resource level this. And that is done right here. So you can see that activity C was delayed one day. You had one day of float. Activity D was delayed two days. You had two days of float. Um, activity F was also delayed two days. And activity G was not delayed at all, even though you did have two or one day of float. And you can see the difference in your resource or your uh, dozers per day versus this is the uh, resource level graph. You can see for the first three days, you'll only need two. And then on the fourth day, it jumps up to three. For days five through nine, you'll need five. And then it goes back down to three on this 10th day, and then two on the 11th and 12th days. Versus before resource loading, you had quite a mess. And for the first three days, it would be two dozers, and then you need to jump up to six on the fourth day and then get rid of one for the fifth and sixth day, and then get rid of one for the seventh and eighth day. And it's just not very uh, economical to be getting rid of dozers and bringing them into the job site like that. So there you can see that resource loaded is much easier. And there you have it. That's all you need to do for a resource loaded question.